often press the Start Broadcast button on the GoToWebinar control panel to allow all attendees to hear you. This system will notify you once you begin your broadcast. Hey folks, is everybody here? Sorry I'm a little bit late. Uh, there was a problem logging into the GoToWebinar screen. Uh, can everybody see me? Let's see if I can uh, get any feedback from anybody. Uh, can I be seen? Just hit something in the questions area there. Um, just let me know you can see me by asking a question. Can you see me? Yes or no? I will assume yes. On air showing screen it says welcome. Um, just put something in questions to let me know you can see. Okay, good. Thanks, Joe. Okay, thanks. So um, we are now going to take a look at a bunch of different things. Thanks, everybody. I got it. Yeah, I just something weird happened, and uh, as is often the case, uh, something started uh, screwing up. Right, I, I started this actually about eight minutes beforehand, and it was a, a problem. So anyway, let me just say welcome uh, again. This is what I usually do. I always pre pre prepare this in advance to the weekly JV Partner. Uh, webinar, weekly webinar, and this is me, Fred Gleek, and I'm uh, in in the unfortunate situation of not having, any, all of the JV partners are busy doing something, they all told me, so I'm going to just go ahead and give you some information without them being here, and I'm going to move over to another seat now that I can figure out how this is working, and um, I'm going to uh, tell you a little bit about what I've been working on. And this should help you, I think. So bear with me here as I get started. Um, again, I'm a little bit behind because things got screwed up. Okay, so uh, first thing for me is that I've been doing, like you've seen over the past few webinars, a lot of work with the uh, with Kindle eBooks. And what I've been doing is I've been setting up uh, a lot of different kinds of books on my topics. And the thing that I would recommend that everybody do is to figure out what it is that you're, you know, anything around your topic. So in my case, if it's information marketing, I'm looking for any and everything um, related to that. So this is even more, I, I, I've got like, I don't know what the last count was, but close to 3,500 products that I've created over the years, audios, videos, books, etc. But with the Kindle eBooks, current numbers are such that there, there are just so many out there that we have to try and figure out which ways we can get to people. And also, I've, re, I've resurrected some of the things that I had uh, that I've forgotten about. For example, I had written a book uh, with my uh, now wife about how to find the love of your life online. So I was just in the process of putting that up earlier today. So let's see, and, I'm, and I can sort of show you what's going on there. Uh, if I go to my Kindle, uh, Am uh, you don't have to put the www, Amazon.com account, and this will log us in. Uh, well, no, that's not the right one. It's KDP, kdp.amazon.com. Okay, so now I go over here, I sign in, and it's going to give me my list of titles, and I've got now a bunch of these. Now, the thing that happens when you add a new title or if you make any changes to any of your existing titles. They put it on hold for a period of time. I see now it has gone off of hold. So this was on hold, this one, which is, let me see if I can enlarge the type here for you. Um, uh, my computer is not behaving properly here. Um, let's see, and now I've got the spinning wheel of death on the Mac, which is not a good thing. So I'm hoping that uh, that doesn't continue to spin there. Yes, it is. Well, then who knows? We're going we're gonna to punt on that one. Okay, so let's just go back to it and I'll tell you about it. Anyway, what happens is any changes that you make, now there it got huge all of a sudden because it was like, okay, so here it is. So winning the dating game, when we put this ebook together a long time ago, so I decided, well, why don't I figure out if there's, some way that we can sort of re revive, repurpose, whatever we want to call it, old material. So, but any changes that you make, um, they will, meaning Amazon, they, Amazon, um, Amazon will 
put a temporary hold on you being able to have the item live. So what you'll see is a hold on it, and I was gonna show you that, but as it turns out, they already proved it. And that means that if you're putting up, like initially I put up this particular ebook without a cover, and then I went to a guy at Fiverr who created a cover for me. So when we see here, now presumably this is gonna be live, win the dating game. So I'm gonna to go to Amazon, and let's just find out if, in fact, it's there. Um, and again, I'll small this type down a little bit here. Let's go to our Kindle store and put in win the dating game, and we should be able to find the ebook that I just put up earlier today. And I had a and I had a cover done by one of the uh, one of the guys that I have on Fiverr that I use a lot. And so, let's see here, is it going to come up? Again, it's, something's incredibly slow for some reason here. And I don't know what's going on here, but let's see. Um, so, I put in Win the Dating Game within the Kindle store just to try and locate my individual book. Yeah, and here's, here's what the guy has. So, I, um, this guy literally designed this, and it's a very, very simple ebook cover. It's nothing fancy. But he'll do, he'll do two ebook covers for five dollars, and so at least now, rather than having to to just put some up some kind of black and white stupid cover up there that doesn't you know doesn't look good at all, what I did was I had this guy at Fiverr do it for me, and here's what it looks like. Again, it's nothing fancy, but as you can see, it's decent. So it's win the dating game, how to find the love of your life online. And this was, I was taking previous content, putting it in here. Now, one of the things that you're going to understand by listening in on this webinar is that a lot of people who are doing Kindle eBooks um, are having problems making money. The reason why they're having problems making money is they don't understand that you can't really make a whole lot of money from the Kindle eBook itself. You make money from everything that comes after it. So then you'd have to ask yourself, okay, what we're trying to do here is just get our name in front of a lot of people. And by the way, if this looks pretty pixelated or if the image doesn't look that good, it, it really isn't. But it's a decent, I mean, what do you want for five bucks? I got this and another one that he did for me. And uh, not bad, not bad at all for, you know, for, for five dollars. So the thing that you have to remember is all of these books or any of the books, any of the Kindle books that you do as an information marketer should be geared to having you know additional sales being able to be generated. So that means that, well, so how are we gonna do that with the dating? I don't have any other products uh, for dating or love online kind of stuff. But I was able to set up a number of, so numerous affiliate, affiliate links with dating sites. So that within this book, anybody who clicks on a link to go to one of the various dating sites, whether it be eHarmony, Match.com, or the others, I have got, I've got myself set up as an affiliate so that I can get commission on that, which makes a lot of sense because if I don't have any products or if you don't have any products, the question is, after somebody buys your ebook, well, what is it, you know, what are they going to get and, and how are you going to get it? So anyway, my goal is, like I think I said to this group last week, is to try and get about one book per week up on the Kindle site. Now, this is going to eventually pay a lot of fruit. Early on, it's not going to, because right now, as you might be able to see, and I can show you here again, if we go back to the KDP, uh, KDP, I, uh, let me just show you this here. So far, and I don't know what it was last time, but so far, this period of time, this month, I have sold, let's just see here. Let's see what the real, these are real numbers, by the way. I'm not just inventing these. So currently, I have sold that 17, 19, 38, 48 down to there, 55, 57, 63, 65. So 65 different 
ebooks, many of which have been sold at a whopping 99 cents. Now, by the way, if you're at 99 cents, you're only getting 35% of the revenue. Now, as soon as you get to 299, then Kindle cuts you in on 70% of the revenue. So your question might be, well, why aren't I pricing these all at least 299? And the reason is you can sell a whole lot more of them at the lower price point. And all of them are, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do this all just to get people sort of to find out about who I am, bounce them back to my site, get them to do various things, and, and that's really my primary goal. Um, so this is, yeah, Jeff is asking about, you know, getting people onto an email list. That's exactly what happens with all of these books, as a matter of fact. So if you look at the information marketing made easy here, and let's go back to Amazon itself for that. Amazon, and if we go to Amazon itself, and we put in, okay, information marketing, uh, and Kindle books, information marketing made easy, here it is. So we find mine, we click on it, and we can do a look inside, or we could download a sample if we wanted to. So if we do a look inside, you'll see that I've got this set up in such a way that within the first X number, right here, as a matter of fact, find out more about the author by visiting fredgleek.com and to get your free copy, and I give a bit.ly link here, which sends them to some free audio materials. And that's within the, in other words, this was the total amount that they could have downloaded for free, and part of it included a link to go back to my site. So let's click on this here. So I click this here. I think it might open up another window, which I don't really want it to do, but let's try it here. Um, is it? Yeah, there we go. Let me just bring that down because I'm recording this here. Um, so it's going to open up and it's going to take people to my site where we've got them having to opt in to get this free basic information marketing course. So the point here is, if you're going to be doing Kindle books, understand a lot of people are going to do this. So again, enough about that. The, the other thing that I wanted to talk to everyone about today, and this is someone who, again, isn't on the call, but will be and has been on past calls and will be on future calls. One of my JV partners just spent a bunch of money uh, getting, all of his, getting all of his equipment to do video recording. And... This cost him, the total setup that I gave him, which is pretty complete, came to about $2,000. And that included two cameras. Oh, it included a tripod. It, including, it, including light, it included lighting um, and a few other things that were important to him to do this. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up is that I just went to, and I spent a lot of time... For those of you who aren't Mac users or owners already, please do it. Here's why. I mean, I use the Mac for everything related to this business of information marketing. Everything, everything, everything. And one of the things that I like is it gives you this thing called a one-to-one -one membership. And the one-to-one -one membership has allowed me to really learn the various types of software that I'm using. And since Apple acquired Final Cut Pro, um, for the most part, iMovie is really all that you need to work with iMovie for you know for video and GarageBand and iTunes for audio. Now for text, again I use a Mac program now called Pages, and you can save as Microsoft Word so that you can save a document when when you're done as Microsoft Word, so other people who only have Word can pick it up. But if you think about it. You know, those of us information marketers for, you know, primary means of, of producing info products. And those are, you know, audio, video, text, and experiential, experiential events. So that means that with, with the Mac, I can do all three of these and I can do audio 
with GarageBand and, and iTunes video with iMovie and also I'm going to talk to you about the fact that I'm going to be using Final Cut Pro and then text I use pages. Experiential events I just put on my own seminars and events and um, drive people to that. So there are four primary means of, of creating and selling info products. Those are the primary areas, the primary modalities that you're going to worry yourself about. So I had him get this complete setup uh, for doing his his video also um, you know so that's not a bad budget if you're thinking about doing all this yourself two thousand dollars you can get it done and if you wanted to get some more some more audio material by the way in this I think part of this was he got two um, wireless mics and now here's what happens and the reason why I wanted to talk a little bit about this as it relates to the whole concept of video. You know, he got all this material, he got all this equipment, and one of the big problems with, um, with recording video is that oftentimes video is perceived as being good or bad, not just because of the video quality, but because of the audio that goes along with it. It may sound really strange, but if you were to sit and I were to ask you to watch a film, or two groups of people to watch a film. And one group of people, I would say, hey, you know, I, I'd give them both uh, a rating sheet afterwards. And if the only thing that I changed was I made the audio a little bit sort of not, you know, not maybe substandard, but a little bit worse than the others, people would perceive that the quality of the picture was actually worse because of the audio. So it's a weird thing. But perception about video has a lot to do with the audio. So naturally, when, you know, you've got these the, the cameras that I recommended to these guys, this guy, uh, cost about 300 bucks or so a piece each. So now, and I, I, again, I'm sorry I can't break this down more completely, but these are some of the items in terms of the $2,000 total. But the problem with these cameras for 300 bucks a piece is that they have what are called built-in built condenser mics, and they, they suck. They're awful. Now, the way that you're going to be able to get around that, well, what you had to do up until recently uh, with most programs is you had to do what's called syncing up your audio. Now, what that meant was you could be recording your video signal on, by the way, these cameras that are 300 bucks a piece are HD, great, great video signal, crappy, very crappy um, audio from the condenser mic. Now, even if you use, and, and the the ones that I was recommending, that I recommended to him and that he bought, uh, were the Canon Vixias, which we've talked about here before. And I think that, it's, I don't know, it's RF, they change these numbers all the time, RF, you know, RF 11 or something like that. But they should be around $300 if you go to BH, b &H photo. Oh. But so what happens is when you record your audio, you usually say to yourself, okay, well, the, the video is, you know, going to be good because it's a decent camera, but my audio from the camera itself is going to may, may sort of suck. So what do I do? Well, one of the things you can do is you can have your video running just using your condenser mic, and that'll record the audio pretty lousy. And then you can record a separate audio track. And so when you record a separate audio track for your, for your video, what happens is that you can record this using really good quality mics and the whole thing. So you have a really great piece of audio. The problem is you now have to get the two of these things together. You have to get your good audio together with your good video and maybe probably going to do maybe a little bit of editing. And so now you've got the problem of trying to sync up your audio. It used to be that you used to use, and, and in the movies you'd always see these things called a clapper, which was they would slap this big thing down to make a big noise so you would know and you could exactly sort of sync up your audio. Well, the nice thing is, in the new version coming out of Final Cut Pro, and this is why I recommend that all of you get this eventually, Final Cut Pro is going to have a feature which is unbelievable, which will allow the system to take your, so you're going to have two audio tracks, right? You have two audio tracks. Okay, one is going to be from your condenser mic on your video camera on your video camera camera and the other one is going to be from a good 
slash grade audio source. The problem is always be trying to, you know, once you put those two things together in a program, is what's called syncing them up, which is make sure they line up so you don't have somebody's voice, somebody's face moving when they're not really, you know, the, the audio doesn't come out. So now the cool feature of Final Cut Pro is it will look at the wave features within within the condenser mic and 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 automatically sync them up because although the audio might be crappy, the wave pattern itself will look pretty much the same even though it's from a, a crappy condenser mic. So the beauty of this is you won't have to sync stuff up. So again, Final Cut Pro, uh, wait until the version comes out in the spring sometime, probably sometime latest, I think April, and it's going to cost around $300. And that, in addition to your Mac, should help you. So that's something that you want to very much take a look at. Now, the beauty of this new version of Final Cut Pro that's coming out is in addition to this auto syncing feature using the waveforms from the two audio sources is it's also going to have what's called multi-camera editing, which is basically allowing you to take video signals from two or three or four or five different video sources and edit them simultaneously where you can jump from one to the other to the other and you have them all in what's called the same, you know, in the same timeline. Uh, this is an important feature, especially if you're doing camera shoots with uh, more than one camera. Now, again, we can do things on a really basic level or we can do things at this level. So let's go back to the very basics. Let's say you said you said to me, you know what, I don't want to do that. I'll assume you have a Mac. If you don't, I can't help you because I don't know PCs at all. I literally can't. I'm scared to touch them. So if you had a Mac and you wanted to do this total budget, the Mac, most Macintosh computers, I think all now, have a built-in video camera. And it's not great, but you can use that built-in video camera to capture video images and, and movies, basically, to capture movies. So you could create any of your movies using just what you have in your Mac. Same thing is true with audio. You take your garage band, open it up, and record the audio using the built-in mic in your computer. Now, everybody always asks me, well, you know, how different is it? And it really depends on which Mac you have, because most of the Mac cameras that they have are pretty average. Um, but I did see something recently, and this is something pretty cool that I'll share with everybody here that I'll actually look it up. Um, and I think it's iPhone versus, um, what is it, movie camera. This is really cool. I got the new iPhone 4 here recently, and I wanted to show everybody... Um, let's see here. Um, oh, here it is. Yeah, I think this is it. So here is a here is a video showing you the difference between an iPhone recording video and some very complex and fancy looking. I think this is it. Um, if they do this here, let me just see. Uh, ah, this is probably, you know what, I know I found it in YouTube. So it's um, iPhone versus, like iPhone versus, let me try, iPhone, iPhone versus Canon. So here's what I think this is it, let's see. Yeah, watch this. So here is... <laughs> The point is that the the quality of the the video being done by the iPhone is amazing. Here's the one that I actually was thinking of when I mentioned this. So just take a look at these images side by side, okay? And it's tough for you to see, I know here. I wonder if I did this. Nope, I didn't want to do that. Um, There we go. 
And basically what I'm showing you here, if you can see it, and you're going to have to pull this up in, in YouTube yourself, it's virtually undetectable. Um, in terms of the differences. So what I'm, what I'm saying here is you're going to want to very seriously consider an iPhone for the purposes of recording video because the camera they've got built in there now is superb. So I'm going to cancel that and just get out of there. But the point is, yes, a question came in from David. What's the point of a bit.ly link? Uh, Bitly allows you to, and let me just give you a quick bit.ly, although I think we should now all be switching over to different free trackable links. Google has one, and so what, it, what, what a Bitly link does is it allows you to shorten the length of your URL, your link that you're sending people to, and to track the data. The problem is that the .ly here relates to Libya, so nobody knows how long you know that you know how long that's going to stay working or intact um, so if we went in here and we put in Google uh, tracking Google tracking link link code so if we went to that there is a there's a thing called a, a Google or whatever what's what's the term for this I forget hold on so Google has their own, and I'm spacing out on what it is. There's a specific new Google code. Let me just put in here, Google, Google versus Bitly. OK, Google URL shortener versus Bitly. And here it is. Google now has a link shortener like Bitly. Let's see if it tells us where it is. Seeing it right off here. Google, okay, URL, geo, okay, so here it is. Geo, take a look at this. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's geo-geo.gl. Uh, so let's say I put in here, um, and let's put a HTTP colon www.fredgleek.com forward slash training dash video. I think it's videos. Okay, so I say shorten. Here's the link. So it says command C to copy. So I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to put that link into here. I'm going to hit return. And it's going to take me, hopefully, it's having a, we're having some speed and server issues here, obviously. But this shortened my link, that long link, into a very short link. And it also allows me to track the number of people who come in from that link. So David, I think that answers the question there. So you, you're now in a position for, for doing it. Um, this, and the reason why you want to do, now the problem with Bitly, let me just show you my, I have a Bitly account and I like one of the things you saw in that ebook that I just had, and, is that Bitly is an open, pretty much an open source. And I did this, I think, uh, I think I saw this for Conan the other day. And let me just show you what happens here. Because Conan has been using Bitly links. I'm not a huge Conan fan, but uh, I'll occasionally follow him. And one of the things that, uh, one of the things he does is he'll put out a picture out there or send a link to someone and he'll use Bitly. So here's what happens and what you can do. And again, I apologize for these slow load times. I don't know if it's everybody's servers are going nuts or what is happening, but uh, I don't think, I don't know if it's my internet connection. It might be. But so I'm trying, maybe it's Team Coco. I think that's what it was. Yeah. Team Coco. Yeah, I think that must be it. Yep, here it is. So I was pulling the wrong thing. So a lot of times in here, Conan will have, he'll have bit.ly links. Let me just see if I can find one. He has them in his Twitter account all the time. Um, let me just see here. You know what, I can, ah, uh, wait, here it is, yeah. So here's a bit.ly link that Conan has, and it is 
let me just copy it onto a onto a clipboard here to show you. So here's a bit.ly link I'm copying from Conan's site. Let me see if I can enlarge that so you can see it better. So that's the bit.ly link, right? Or yeah, that's so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how this works. I've got that copied on the clipboard, so I'm going to paste it into here into my browser. And it's showing me something I don't know what it is, but it, it's showing me something. Now that if I were to take this bit.ly link and add the plus sign to it, everybody got that? So take this, add it into here, put that in there. Uh, well, let's see here. That's not quite working. Maybe he's masked this now, but what was happening before, and it'll happen if we go back to my link, in my Amazon account, and I think this is important enough to show you. So I'm going to go back and find my marketing made easy in Kindle store. I'm going to find information marketing. Information. Whoops, information. There it is. So here it is. Okay, so I'm going to go, let's look inside. We found my bit.ly link, which was here. Remember this? Now, the reason why Conan's is he did some kind of a masking program, but it's it's bit.ly dot, I don't know if I can, if I can copy that. Let me try and copy it here, just to, just to do that real quick. Um, let me see, it's bit dot ly forward slash p capital Y small x q Looks like an O, but I'm not sure. O, I think it's an L. Is that an L? Yeah. O and then a capital S. So let me take this and see if it gets us to the right place real quick. And you'll understand why I'm doing this here in a second. Okay, so that's the bit.ly link, right? No, there's something wrong. Maybe that's a zero. Let's assume it's a zero. Yep, it is. So it was a zero rather than the O, so it's a zero, and it's taking me to the same place we went to earlier, which is this, which I'm sure is familiar to you at this point. So now let's take that and add a plus sign to it and put it here, and let me show you what happens. It gives you stats, like I don't know how much this is, but in other words, it's, it's, it's sort of open to the public. So anytime you see a bit.ly link, you can see how much traffic someone has gotten from that link, which is not something that you may want to have a, other people know about. Um, and so I would encourage you to, uh, to not use bit.ly if you want you know, privacy about how many people are clicking on something. So that's an important thing for you to remember. So I think that the Google, um, whatever we, whatever Google's using here, as I said, it's what is it? G O G O O G O dash. Oh, look, does anybody remember? <laughs> well, hold on, I've got to have it in my my browser history here. Where is it? Let's see. Here. Google. Google versus Google versus Bitly. Here it is. Google shortener. There you are. Shortening service. Okay. So it's G-O-O -O dot G-L. So we can put in, if we find some really long, convoluted, you know, thing that we want to send people to, like, let's give you an example here. If we go to, I'm going to, I'm going to bookmark this, by the way, add a bookmark. Yeah, I know where it is now. So let me just go to Yahoo for a second. So if Yahoo had a story that we liked, so the mystery of the USO in Kansas, Look at how long this URL is here. So we're going to take this long URL as soon as it fully loads. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go back here to Google, to the, my shortening service. I'm going to put it in here. And I'm going to put shorten. And it comes up with this one right here. So now I can go back to here, load it in there, and it sends me to that UFO story. Now, the nice thing is if you have a Google account, which you should have because you should have Google Analytics and everything else running, what this allows you to do is, again, to track 
that within it. So th thanks for asking the question, David. I got a little bit sidetracked here, but I think it's important that you know how to do that. Now, on the audio side, like I was saying, you know, you're going to be wanting to do videos, but if you want to do audio cheap, it's very inexpensive to use your Mac to launch, you know, GarageBand, and, and I mean, it's super simple. I mean, I could do it right now. I'm just worried that if I launch it, for some reason, everything's pretty slow here, but it's, it's a really simple and easy to use audio program. So I would encourage you to you know, to use and get a Mac if you don't have one, even if it's just for your information marketing stuff. Um, great for keynotes. Uh, and, and again, the one-to-one -one membership allows you to learn everything you want to know. So when you go in there and you can do one-to-ones, you know, often and, and you can get a lot done. It's a hundred bucks for a year of learning and it's worth every single penny of it. So I'd encourage you to do that. So we've talked a little bit about video, a little bit about audio, a little bit about the bit.ly links versus the geo dash. What was it? It is GL, right? Is that what it was? Let me just see here. Geo dash, GL. Those three there. There, three the shortener. G-O-O dash G, dot GL. G-O-O dash GL. There it is. So that's the service that I would recommend you use as a link shortener. From the audio standpoint, you could do audio without spending additional money by just recording right into your computer uh, like I'm doing right now. But I am using, and by the way, uh, one of the things that I do every week, and this is why if you want to see any of the recordings of any of these webinars, I record these and I use my cool screen capture tool.com. By the way, and for those of you who haven't been on these webinars, uh, much or at all. One of the things I do is every time I find a, a tool or a service or a product that I really like, I come up with my own affiliate link for it. And all of my affiliate links are usually cool, then blank, whatever they are, and then tool, so that they're easy for me to remember. So I've got a lot of cool tools of various sorts. There's cool video tool, you know, which is for video email, which by the way has been very successful. Bill DeWeese has been doing that, which by the way, Bill DeWeese is in here. We'll talk to him. Talk, we'll take a look at his site here in a second. But all of these, I would encourage all of you guys, and where, where should you get them? Ultracheapdomains.com is where you should reserve all these various names because I get about a quarter for each one you reserve. But I set the prices as low as you can possibly get them, and you should do that. So Ultra Cheap Domains. Uh, and, and start a system whereby your, your affiliate links are all based on. So if we go to Cool Screen Capture Tool, that's what I'm using to record these videos for the webinars. It sends me over to, it sends me over to, sends you over to, if you go over there, over to the uh, ScreenFlow particular, the ScreenFlow service that works with the Mac, which is basically a screen capture program. That's why I used Cool Screen Capture Tool as the name for this particular one. Now, if I wanted to, I could further you know, do this. I could take Cool Screen Capture Tool, and I could put this into, let's say I, was, I knew I was going to be doing something in, in uh, writing an article, say, at a very specific place. I'd go to History. I'd go to Google URL Shortener. Again, if, if I were logged in, I keep getting that guy's stuff. I would put cool screen capture tool in here. And I think I have to put all that. So I'd say shorten, and it would give me a link here, which when I put it into the browser, and again, this for tracking purposes, if you're in your account, I do that, and it sends me to the same place to order the cool screen capture tool. But I have an additional level of tracking involved there. So Something you may want to consider is to use these URL shortening tools. I think it would be worth your time to take a look at those. Um, okay, so what else did I want to show you here? Again, we're a few days before Christmas. None of the joint venture partners are here, but I did want to show you Bill DeWeese's site, which is voice-over-training.org. And it is new. Since last we looked at it last week, uh, Bill has had the site redone. And it's looking pretty good here. So 
he's got these rolling testimonials that come up here. And Bill is a JV partner, so I'm always happy to see his stuff doing well. And he's got his, uh, you know, discover seven key secrets to build a six-figure voiceover income. And so let's say, let's just to give you an idea of what he says here. So you want to get into the voiceover business. Good. You have definitely come to the right place. Welcome to voice-over-training.org. I'm Bill DeWeese, and I am not coming to you today from a TV studio or a video production set or somebody else's recording studio. This is actually my very own recording studio, which... And so now Bill just got this site redone. Some of the links aren't up and running yet, but I think that you could learn a lot by looking at this site. Um, products under here, I don't think the product links are up yet to get some of his various things. And by the way, that, that opt-in video appears on every page. You see it here as well. Um, let's see, I don't think, yeah, I don't think any of these, uh, none of these links are working yet. He literally just got it up. And so it's going to, it's going to be a little while before it, uh, it kicks in there. So coaching, he's got things for coaching. And by the way, Bill has done, uh, some really good stuff. I don't here. Let's see. Click more information to apply. Let me just small this down again. And some of you may have seen this if you've been on the webinars quite a bit. Um, this is Bill basically took my, you know, consultwithfred.com concept and did it for, or maybe JV with Fred. And he basically set up a site, voice talent coach, fast forward your voiceover business with coaching from one of the top experts in the field. And then he has you fill in a lot of this kind of stuff. So he's he's using this. This is very similar, by the way, to, let me go back to this, very similar to consult with fred.com or actually similar, and you can write that one down and take a look at it later, jv with fred.com. And I think that's the one that Bill is sort of copying there. Although I put in a number of videos and then click, when you click, let's get started, he makes you fill out all this information. And again, take a look at what I'm doing at these various sites um, to give you an idea of what to do. So I would take a look at consult, put that in caps, consult with fred.com, jv with fred.com, and just copy those basically. You know, use what I've been doing for yourself. And, um, you know, it's creative stealing. That's what, what I'm here for. And by the way, all of you, if you like, if you're on a webinar perhaps for the first time, remember that if you go to my site here, and this is fredgroup.com, and then you click on, or you can put it forward slash webinars, and it will give you, my site has now probably, you know, 50 or more previously recorded webinars now. And I'd highly, highly encourage you to go back and watch some of these because a lot of the information is pretty, uh, it, it doesn't get old. And uh, so these are, in addition to everything else I'm doing, this was last week's, and some of them now have transcripts. It says transcript available. And by the way, I don't do any editing on the transcripts, so don't expect them to be perfect because they will not be. So Here's what I'm doing, and I would encourage all of you guys to do this as well, which is if, if you record your content, you know, get it done. And then, by the way, all of this content in here is, uh, you know, this, this just creates more and more stuff on your site and makes it so that Google thinks you have. Because if you look, I have some, I don't know, what if I have 2,000, 2,500 pages on my fredglick.com site, which Google will assume, if everything else being equal, that you must have a kick-butt site and they should rank you high. And thank goodness for things like information marketing. And here's, you know, you go to information marketing, information marketing, and I come up number one. Now, by the way, if somebody does this to you to try and prove something to you, uh, be careful because a lot of times if they, if they start Clicking on a link a whole bunch of times, Google will think they want to go there. And so for a given keyword turn, they will rate high. 
So there's a guy named Mike, and he's got this tool. And again, here's another good thing, Mike's rank ranking tool. If you put in Mike's ranking tool in Google, it's a longer URL. Here it is, mikes-marketing-tools.com. Um, by the way, don't buy anything there until I say to you. So now here's what, what you do. This is kind of cool. So if you put my URL in, you could see for the search term for uh, information marketing that I really am uh, where I say I am as opposed to just claiming I am. So I'm going to put in information marketing here. And this you can do this for anyone as well. So whoops, got a little big there. But as you can see, the thing that we're mainly concerned about, which is Google, uh, I'm coming up number one for Google, number seven for Yahoo. That kind of stinks. I don't know why that is. And maybe I'm doing something wrong with that. But um, so I, I also have been Googling some stuff for my buddy Bill DeWeese here. So let's take a look at his. So his is voice dash over, and it's going to fill in automatically because I've gone there before. So I'm going to go to voice over training. That's one of the keywords we're trying to target for Bill. So we go to voice over training, and I hate it that it doesn't stay within the size. So for that one, he's now 19. For Google, 35 for Yahoo. Not very good right now, but again, something that will change here shortly. So what about voiceover business? That's another one of his keywords that he's targeting. And for voiceover business, he's a little bit better off here. He's at, uh, wow, four for Bing, no, uh, for Yahoo, nice. So 10 for Google, four for Yahoo. Let's click on this Yahoo link here. Again, bring it down to size so that we can look at it because I've got, I'm recording this and I want to keep it a certain size here. So if he's number four, that's a good sign. So he's voice-over-training.org, there it is. So again, this is, uh, this is getting good for Bill. So again, what's, what's our lesson to, lesson to take away? Just a few things here. Um, Merry Christmas and Happy Hanukkah and Happy Everything Else for you. Uh, but I just wanted to give you a couple of ideas. Again, like I said, we do these every Wednesday, same time, same channel. There will be one again next week right after Christmas. And I will talk, hopefully, some of the JV partners will be here. Uh, if not, I hope you've found this enjoyable. I usually go for anywhere between 50 and 60 minutes. We're at about our appointed time, so I wanted to thank everyone for being here. 